Fortnite Squad. The meta has changed again, and in the very first weeks of Season 9, people are going wild. Epic Games unvaulted the drum gun, introduced slipstreams, and most importantly, completely changed the way things work. And in order to succeed in late game this season, you're going to have to follow the following steps pretty closely. Hey, what's up guys? This is Dan from Pro Guides, and we cooked up another video for you guys to help you adapt to the current Fortnite meta. This video will revolve around five topics, the spray meta, rotating, tunneling, positioning, and decision making. The first thing we're going to discuss is the drum gun, a weapon that can affect your entire endgame. A few seasons ago, the drum gun was wreaking havoc in Fortnite with the spray and prey meta. As a result, many players were complaining, so Epic went along and vaulted it. Recently, they brought it back and it's even deadlier than before. With the pump shotgun thrown into the vault, shotguns are slowly slipping into oblivion. Or are they? If you want to be effective in competitive play, you need to use some form of spray weapon. Ninja himself went on about it complaining that the drum gun is still in the game, and still as strong as ever. And he said, play the new patch for 90 minutes, and I'm gonna say it, vault the drum gun. So what do you guys think? Is the drum gun still OP? Epic also decided to vault the P90, good riddance. But wait, there's more. When we take a look at the very new tactical AR, it seems just like the P90. It's fully automatic, has a 30 round magazine, deals 22, 23, 24 damage, headshot multiplier of 1.75x. This weapon also has a tight spread in close quarters, but is less effective at long range when compared to other assault rifles. Is this weapon going to be the new P90? Let me know what you guys think. Epic time and time again always seems to remove a weapon and then adds it back into the game in a different way. Anyway, we're curious to see how it all goes. I haven't heard any complaints about it so far, so it must be fine. While I definitely argue that the tactical shotgun and the compact are still useful, if you don't have a drum gun or tactical assault rifle in a season 9 endgame, you're at a significant disadvantage. I mean, we've all been through those lousy 8 damage pump shots. The new compact shotgun seems to be doing well, it's just a fact that the drum gun does nearly as much damage and it does it a lot faster. The sheer spray power of the gun alone is enough to compensate for not having a shotgun or SMG. We rounded up a couple clips here in the Fortnite World Cup qualifiers last week, showing you the power of the drum gun. Now, I know the drum gun was slightly nerfed, but the same concepts apply. It seems as if every fight that went off was in favor of the drum gun. Hey, let's roll those clips. In months in a public game for Fortnite, Mr. Savage spraying with the drum gun there, eliminates Marcus. Three players in total, one currently in shadow form just above. Mr. Savage knows this, no builds left, and due to the height, it's so awkward. Everyone dropping on in, sprays down one to second just above, and it's Wolfies with the drum gun who secures the victory royale. Now we're checking in with Fnatic Sneep. We saw him get that high ground earlier and that heavy sniper shot. He's sitting on six eliminations right now, and lo and behold, on that ultimate high, but he's going to have to protect it from these incoming players from the rift, and does take out Payam. He's going absolutely insane with this drum gun. Absolutely insane indeed. Still has that heavy sniper. He might need to utilize it at this point if there is a player that is trying to build up on top of him. It looks like he escapes it. Ooh. Does get fall, like dropped all the way down to the bottom, but finds a player in his box and is able to just apply all of the pressure. Will he be able to take this player out? He yeah. is. Elimination. You see him now raining down these drum gun shots with great accuracy onto Kaluja, getting that elimination, and Grim jumping in his wow. one by one. Kitty. Doesn't flinch for a second. Smith now sitting on 10 eliminations, reloading that drum gun. It is so important in these final moments. No shotgun, so this is what he's going to rely on for these close encounters. Another opponent, Recon, dropping into his one by one. Again, doesn't flinch, pops out his drum gun and takes him out. Gets a nice little RPG gift, taking this high ground. This is his game to win. Smeef sitting on the high ground, three rockets. He's gonna have to use these to the best of his abilities. Getting a clean little keyhole shot through there, dropping down with the wow. drum gun. Getting Having the 100 medium ammo, so he's gonna be able to just spray and punish his aggro. Goes down, Landjuck picks up Colin Frags as well. So now we're into that top five. It's all about the Elims and the Vicky Rao. Jaden Shots goes down to the storm. Dubs is still pressing forward. Like I said, the best of the best aren't concerned with just barely making it. They want to win every fight. They want every point. As Vix gets Landjuck on the low ground, Dubs gets Nate Hill on the high ground. Now it's Dubs versus Vix and Dubs. Ratatat. Even after the 9.41 patch, the gun is still strong. Whether or not to pick up the tactical AR or drum gun is up to you. Next off, when we take a look at rotations, this season is by far the easiest to rotate in. 
Every season, Epic usually adds some kind of new device or item to rotate around the map. Season 5 had the rift, season 6 added shadow stones, season 7 implemented the zip lines, last season we saw the addition of the geysers. And this season, we have the slipstream wind tunnel system, which makes a huge circle around the neo tilted on the map. But it's important to keep this aspect of this new device. While the slipstream makes it easier to rotate around the map, but due to easy rotation access, there's also the potential to be third partied like never before. Every fight I got into near a slipstream had like two or three people landing on me. So what can you do to avoid this? Well, I highly recommend not fighting near these slipstreams. Only use them for rotations, as it can be really risky, not to mention easy for somebody who wants to get away from you. Most high skill fights are 50-50, and in a place where multiple enemies can pop in out of nowhere, it's just not worth it. Think of all those times you took an engagement you regretted. The rage is just not worth it at this point. Apparently, many of you people like the slipstreams, but these can be very detrimental to late game rotations. Imagine being in a build fight and a nearby slipstream pulls you into the storm. Yikes. On the good side, Epic just disabled them in this new patch after the fifth storm zone, so no more annoying slipstreams late game. One of the other items that has been a real drive in late game rotations are rift to goes and ballers. Now, these make for a fantastic way to rotate, but you can't build your rotations around them since they're not a guaranteed item. Also, Epic decided to drop the ball and nerf ballers to 150 health. Their reason for this was as follows. They said, the primary goal of the baller is to provide fun and exciting mobility. We feel that it still has a little too much defensive agency. This change should reduce the effectiveness there while not impacting its strengths. Well, it looks to me like they don't want people with ballers rolling around having free rotations and a free shield. I'm curious to see how much this change will impact the Fortnite community, so keep your eyes peeled. Another crazy item which offers incredible mobility is the Shadow Bomb. It creates a silhouette-like form, which can help you jump and sneak by dangerous situations, and even climb up builds. There are a ton of ways these bombs can be utilized. Here's an example of an insane 200 IQ play from Mr. Savage, showing you how to utilize the Shadow Bomb. They've got to go up the side of a mountain, shadow and it's bomb. Shadow Bomb time. Look at how awkward this is. Out. He's getting completely blocked that out. He's deciding to take it storm damage. Yes. Mr. Savage! Oh, oh no my way. god! You did not oh my god! Oh my god! Goodness. What a play! Are you so, as you saw, that's an incredible way to use the Shadow Bomb. The mobility it provides for rotating is like nothing we've ever seen. Tunneling in this meta is often overlooked. We have two very distinct ways to tunnel. Let's start with snaking. This involves placing floors above and below you while placing walls on both sides as well. Just make sure you don't turbo build though, it can really mess you up. This is the most basic way to tunnel, but if you're having trouble with this, go to ProGuides.com where we can help you understand all these skills and get you better at Fortnite. There are also side variations on this called diagonal tunneling. It works the same way except for one of your sides remains open. Why? To not burn all of your materials. Late game success is almost always relying on how many materials you have at your disposal. Always remember to tunnel closest to one side as possible, since you don't want to be caught in the middle. Taking a look at positioning and high ground oftentimes is the most important aspect of the game. Learn the map so you can navigate around it, getting the most advantageous positions for yourself. You need to be able to identify which places you can put yourself in in order to give yourself a little bit of an edge. As a battle royale, it's impossible to win using the same strategy every single time, so adapting and changing is part of the game. Here's an example. High ground is probably the best spot you can be in when it comes to late game. If we take a look at Fortnite qualifiers, it was usually the guy on high ground that emerged victoriously. Guys, I keep telling you this, but high ground is the way to win, so do whatever it takes to get up there. Decision making is another important part of finding success in the late game. By now, most Fortnite players have already caught up to the pros when it comes to shooting, aiming, and building. The only real advantage is making smart decisions. You need to be able to identify and understand which decisions you need to play passive and which decisions you need to play more aggressively. I'm sure you guys have watched your favorite pros and wondered how boring was it sitting in a one by one all day. But you need to understand, in pro games, most players are all around the same skill level. So running around W keying everyone won't get you very far. Mongrel himself, one of the most aggressive pros in current Fortnite, is forced to play passive sometimes for the sake of winning. Finding that balance between passive and aggressive playstyle is always key to getting that victory royale. If you watch people like Tifu, you'll notice that after he lasers somebody, he won't always push. It depends on what's right for that exact situation. For example, you wouldn't want to push if you haven't fully scoped out the area around you. More often than not, that'll get you killed. People are always looking to third-party easy fights. The downside is, there's no cookie-cutter method for when to push, so you'll have to make your own judgement calls based on your environment. But you don't always want to stay in the shadows in late game. If you never apply pressure to anybody, you'll be missing out on tons of kills. That's usually where you'll take the biggest hit with this playstyle. And in the arena, this means loss of points, mats, and even placement. Think of players sometimes as walking llamas, so if you miss out on an easy kill, things won't look good. Thinking ahead is also a very valuable tool to have. 
Before you enter any situations, think of all the possible outcomes. Here's a great example. It's late game and you're on low ground. You see nobody has high ground, but all you have is a jump pad. You know using it here would be the best call to get you up there. That particular play could determine the outcome of your whole game. So you see, Endgame revolves around a lot more complex mechanics than people think. It's not simply being a good shooter or builder. Rotating, tunneling, positioning, and decision making is what separates casuals from the pros. Hop into a few games, play aggressively, and do the same for passive gameplay. The only way to get good at any of this stuff is with practice. Take these tips and put them in action. <laughs>